Can a ketogenic diet improve fibromyalgia symptoms? Some studies suggest a ketogenic or low-carbohydrate diet can reduce pain and fatigue, but it doesn't work for everyone. While there's not an abundance of studies proving the effectiveness of the ketogenic diet for people with fibromyalgia, emerging research and anecdotal evidence suggest that it may be beneficial for some. Fibromyalgia is a chronic disorder defined by pain and tenderness throughout the body, fatigue, and, often, sleep problems and difficulty with memory and concentration fibro fog. No single diet has been shown to improve these symptoms. The ketogenic diet is similar to the paleo diet, which emphasizes whole foods and the elimination of sugar, grains, and processed foods. But the ketogenic diet is extremely low carb, moderate in protein, and high in fat. It produces a state of ketosis, in which the body's fat stores are used for energy, and which has been associated with a reduction in hunger, at least anecdotally. John Jack Shelley Tremblay, PhD, professor of psychology and adjunct professor of neurology at the University of South Alabama in Mobile, has done research on the effects of carbohydrates on fibromyalgia symptoms. And while he's skeptical of diet fads, he points to research suggesting that the ketogenic diet is helpful for a number of conditions, including, for example, epilepsy and autism spectrum disorders. He notes that some European studies have found that many people with fibromyalgia improve dramatically when they are on a low-carb or ketogenic diet. The brain craves energy to run, the standard American diet has a lot of sugar, refined grains, and things you wouldn't have found in the evolutionary background of humans, says Dr. Shelley Tremblay. Research, he says, indicates that people with fibromyalgia do not metabolize sugars and other carbohydrates normally, so their cells, including their brain cells, crave energy. The brain is the most energy-craving part of the body pound for pound, and it wants sugar to run, Shelley Tremblay says, referring to the brain's use of glucose as its primary fuel under normal circumstances. People with fibromyalgia are in a constant state of deficit, he says, and have difficulty meeting the energetic needs of the brain. The result can be exhaustion, pain, poor sleep, and fibro fog, which he describes as a condition associated with decreased cognitive capacity, specifically decreased short-term or working memory, decreased attentional resources, fatigue, and trouble concentrating. It's a vicious triangle, he says. Poor sleep, which is both caused by and exacerbates pain, leaves you with fewer cognitive resources to dampen down that pain enough to function. On top of that, he says, are the energetic deficits associated with the metabolic conditions underlying fibromyalgia. In study, high blood sugar leads to lethargy Shelley Tremblay, along with Alan Ernst and John P. Klein, compared the effects consuming carbohydrate had on mood in a small group of women with fibromyalgia with the effects on a similar size group of women who didn't have fibromyalgia, in an earlier study published in the Journal of Musculoskeletal Pain. Many of the women with fibromyalgia acknowledged that they craved carbohydrates and often used them to try to manage their moods and give themselves an energy boost. So when, after having participants fast for 8 to 12 hours, the researchers fed them a big dose of a super sugar Kool-Aid mixture, according to Shelley Tremblay, the women expected to feel better. The researchers recorded the women's blood glucose, assessed their mood using a profile of mood state scale, and recorded the electrical activity in certain areas of their brains using electroencephalography EEG. What actually happened was their anger and hostility spiked, almost in sync with their elevated blood glucose, says Shelley Tremblay. Soon after, instead of getting an energy boost, they felt frustrated and lethargic, and many did not metabolize the sugar well. While Shelley Tremblay's study looked at the effects of a single, large dose of sugar, a study published in the March-April 2013 issue of the journal Orthopedic Nursing looked at dietary patterns in women with fibromyalgia over time. The researchers found that high carbohydrate and sugar intake was linked to reduced quality of life, and increased sugar intake was associated with increased severity of pain. Low-carb diets show more positive effects in lab and in life The effects of a ketogenic diet on pain and inflammation were investigated in a rat study published in the journal PLOS One. Adult and juvenile rats were fed a ketogenic diet for three to four weeks, after which they were given standard tests measuring pain and inflammation. 
Based on their results, the study authors concluded that the diet offers new therapeutic opportunities for controlling pain and peripheral inflammation, and that such a metabolic strategy may offer significant benefits for children and adults. Shelley Tremblay and Ernst compared the effects of different types of diets in humans with fibromyalgia in a study published in November 2013 in the Journal of Musculoskeletal Pain. The participants, all of whom were women, completed a questionnaire on mood, energy level, and fibromyalgia symptoms. Those who reported adhering to a low-carbohydrate diet reported less confusion, distress, and fatigue, and more vigor than those who reported following a typical Western diet. Parry Lama, a scientist and writer living in London, says that a low-carbohydrate diet helps her tamp down chronic fatigue and pain from fibromyalgia. She adheres as closely as possible to a ketogenic diet, but otherwise always keeps the carbs low. She recently discovered a Mediterranean version of the diet that mirrors what she'd already adopted. I almost exclusively eat coconut milk, red meat, and salmon when I need to work an 18-hour day, as I know my body will crash otherwise. However, working an 18-hour day was unheard of for me before I started this diet, the 27-year-old says. Though some may find it difficult to follow a low-carb diet, Lama, while she admits to missing the crunchy foods that are hard to come by when eschewing carbs, says, I can feel the difference so quickly that I'm not inspired to cheat. The impact on pain is so strong that I can feel the difference after more than one carb-heavy meal. The key may be reducing inflammation The primary benefit of ketogenic diets, says Shelley Tremblay, is that they're low in the refined sugars and simple carbs that are so inflammatory. Some people can go into ketogenesis with a low-fat, low-sugar diet, while some need to lay on the fats, he says. But it's not necessary to be in ketosis to see the health benefits of cutting back on simple starches and sugars. It's essentially a low glycemic index type diet that helps, because that has the biggest correlation with reducing inflammation. More information about the glycemic index is available from the Glycemic Index Foundation. For some, low carb makes symptoms worse but just as the symptoms of fibromyalgia are variable, so is response to diet. Not everyone will thrive on a low carb diet. Annie Sisk, 52, of upstate New York, found that her symptoms worsened when she adopted a low-carb diet. My pain levels began soaring almost immediately. I felt so much worse. Nothing helped. I missed days from work. Sisk says. It took some time for her to realize that cycles of constipation and loose stools tracked with her pain cycles. Since low-carb diets create or exacerbate constipation, it makes sense my symptoms got worse. She tried stool softeners and fiber additives to no effect. Sisk has settled on a mostly vegetarian, low-fat diet that she says keeps her pain at manageable levels. Her diet includes lean, grass-fed beef, free-range chicken, and wild fish, along with occasional servings of fruits that have a low glycemic index related, all about fiber, food sources and supplements. Consult an expert when changing your diet whether you're considering trying a ketogenic diet, another type of low-carb diet, or any nutritional approach that's different from what you now eat, it's best to consult a registered dietitian nutritionist RDN, for advice on making the switch. RDNs can help you tailor the approach to your specific needs and help you overcome side effects, such as constipation. In addition, they can help with weight management which, says Shelley Tremblay, is crucial for those living with fibromyalgia. A healthy weight, he says, is essential, since excess weight can contribute to pain, poor sleep, sleep apnea, and wear and tear on joints.